Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of the polysaccharide cellulose. You should then be able to explain how the structure of cellulose relates to its function. Now the first key idea you need to understand is that cellulose is a major part of the cell wall found in plant cells. We're going to look at how cellulose carries out its role later, but we're going to start by looking at the structure of cellulose. So far we've looked at the polysaccharides amylose, amylopectin and glycogen. These polysaccharides are all polymers of alpha-glucose. Now, cellulose is different to all of these, and that's because cellulose is a polymer of beta-glucose. I'm showing you a molecule of beta-glucose here. The key thing to remember with beta-glucose is that the hydroxyl on carbon-1 points above the plane of the ring. Now, this presents a problem. I'm showing you here two beta-glucose molecules side by side. If I want to form a glycosidic bond between carbons 1 and 4, you can see that the hydroxyl groups point in different directions. So when a molecule of cellulose is formed, every second beta-glucose molecule flips like this. And now we can form a glycosidic bond between carbons 1 and 4. OK, I'm going to add a third beta-glucose molecule now. In this case, you can see that we do not need to flip this beta-glucose molecule to form a glycosidic bond between carbon 1 and carbon 4. So remember that to form cellulose, every second beta-glucose molecule is flipped. You also need to remember that cellulose is an unbranched polysaccharide. OK, in the next section, we look at how cellulose molecules are arranged in the plant cell wall, and how cellulose allows the plant cell wall to carry out its function. OK, so as we've seen, cellulose is an unbranched polymer of beta-glucose, and every second beta-glucose molecule is flipped. Now, because cellulose forms a straight chain without any branches, this allows cellulose molecules to get close together, and I'm showing you that here. Hydrogen bonds can now form between neighbouring chains like this. And because a huge number of hydrogen bonds form, this makes cellulose extremely strong. When cellulose chains group together, scientists call this a microfibril. Microfibrils then group together to form larger structures called macrofibrils. And finally, macrofibrils group together to form a cellulose fibre. And these cellulose fibres form the plant cell wall. So the key feature of cellulose is its strength. And this strength allows the cellulose cell wall to carry out its functions. The cellulose cell wall is also permeable to molecules, and a good example is water. Under normal conditions, plant cells contain a great deal of water. As water moves in by osmosis, the plant cell contents push outwards against the cellulose cell wall. The strength of the cellulose cell wall means that it can resist the outwards pressure due to the cell contents, and this prevents the plant cell from bursting. When a plant cell is full of water like this, it becomes rigid. Scientists say that the plant cell is turgid, and these turgid plant cells help to give the plant its upright structure. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the structure of cellulose and explain how its structure relates to its function. 